the Disc Golf Guy, and this is my Paul McBeast in the car. Paul, we are in what is arguably the most notable car in all of Disc Golf. I'm not much of a car guy myself, so go ahead and break it down for everyone. What are, what are we in and what's going on? Uh, it's a 2012 Dodge Challenger. Not really what I wanted at first, but it's got the room. Um, I had a Jeep before. Uh, it's about the same gas mileage as that Jeep did, but it's a little bit more sporty. More eye-catchy than the Jeep, and uh, it's fun to drive, honestly. It's fun to drive. I'm sure you don't drive it above the speed limit. No, not too often. There you go. Good. <laughs> Good answer. Uh, when you were picking out cars, uh, you were thinking about probably traveling around the country, putting on literally thousands upon thousands of miles. What were some of the factors that you were looking for in the in the car you were going to travel in? Well, honestly, my first choice was the Corvette Stingray. I've just always liked that car. I wanted a car for myself because I did have, like I said, the Jeep before. That was a travel car. And uh, then it was kind of like I was going to be touring with myself and my brother. So mm -hmm. we didn't really need too much room. So this had a lot more room than the than the Corvette did so uh, this is what I ended up stumbling upon and going with <laughs> all right now you've logged on roughly how many thousands of miles this year alone uh, when I bought it it was used it had 10,010 miles so 42,050 miles Wow that's quite a few now uh, as you said you usually have travel companions who uh, who else gets to drive this I think I've seen your brother you actually let him do that yeah not many people have actually driven it um, my brother Jennifer has uh, John Tompkins Kyle Sattel I think that's it Those maybe the disc golf guy. you want to drive it I want to drive it. All right. All right. Let's get to it. <laughs> then you can interview. <laughs> I think we'll buckle up for safety. Yes. No more Jeremy Colling sightings. Now, <laughs> if I drive your car like I drive a disc, you're in a lot of trouble. It's got airbags. <laughs> All right. Let's get to it. You also, so you got the paddle shifters if you want the paddle shifters. If you want to test them out, or you can go with this. Wow! If I go standard, straight. that's uh, that's pretty fancy. I'm gonna keep it in check for now because I don't want to uh, I don't want to do anything to possibly hurt this iconic car. Now, you just completed the USDGC. It was one of the most dramatic finishes in all of disc golf. Three-way playoff with Johnny McRae and then the eventual champion in Will Schustrick break down for everyone at home what was going through your mind? Um, well, I guess going into the last hole after Johnny pretty much had the whole tournament in, in control. Uh, I think he had a four or five stroke lead with two holes to play. I honestly thought it was over. Um, I just wanted to you know, just finish strong and hopefully tie for second with Will. Um, but seeing seeing what ended up happening there on 17 it wasn't too much of a surprise but I just didn't expect to see it from Johnny and uh, getting another chance on 17 and then another chance on 18 and then another chance on 18 it was just mentally I don't know I couldn't handle it <laughs> I could not handle it and I wasn't able to take advantage of it but it was it was great for the fans and everyone watching and paying attention to the sport of disc golf it was huge. Now, naturally, there's been a little bit of criticism of Johnny McRae for not simply laying up or throwing maybe even wide right onto that green on 17. What were you thinking as you were watching some of this unraveling? I mean, just, just a year ago, we saw Will Schustrick struggle and kind of give away the event on hole 17. What were you thinking as, as Johnny was uh, doing that? It didn't even cross my mind for him to lay up short. I just thought he was gonna throw it on the island play it way right and the first one he threw I was like okay that's out of bounds he's got two more chances second one didn't make it third one didn't make it and then laying up to that short spot never crossed my mind so I'm sure it didn't cross his and uh, what do you think about laying up way to the right we'll say not necessarily the short spot but just throwing it wide right onto the green 
and uh, so to speak laying up over there thinking if you lay up over there you miss a putt you're still just taking a three did yeah. that cross your mind and I think that's what he was intending to do because when he walked out there he went out there and looked to that right I just don't think he was able to throw the shots there and then once he missed the first and second one he tried to go more for the basket missed the third one and but the way he came back on 18 was, I don't know if anyone else could have done that. That was an amazing drive, and then he forced you guys into that playoff. Will Schustrich missed a relatively short putt. You had the OB penalty. It, like you said, it was every bit of drama as we could ask for in the sport of disc golf. Uh, what's next for you? The USDGC has somehow slipped through your fingers again. I know you're going to be back, you're going to be training hard, you're going to want it bad, but what's going to be next for you uh, for this year and moving into next year? I have a few more events, uh, three at the most. Um, I'm pretty much going to start focusing on next year. Uh, I got a lot of things I got to iron out, a lot of shots I still need to learn, and uh, pretty much just improving. Uh, that's the goal every winter, and I want to improve more mentally, physically, and then on the course. All right, well, that says a lot. You're rated the top player in the world. You've won your third world championship this year, and yet you feel like there's more work to do. So that uh, certainly speaks to your dedication, and that speaks to just how hard you grind and you work it in this game. And uh, all meanwhile, you're driving this car around. Uh, one final question regarding the car. Now, everybody seems to take a photo of it and always post it on social media they always know where the mcbeast car is how do you feel about that i like it you know it's it's something other than disc golf for people to talk about and you know they they look forward to it they go to the course and if they see this car they know i'm out there somewhere so uh i think it brings some excitement uh to some players and some fans so uh, keep doing it there you go well there you have it Crush closes on it, McBeast, and uh, where they can find you on the web, which is exactly? Uh, it was McBeast Disc Golf. Uh, next year, I don't know if it'll be the same, but Innova Champion Disc, they're my biggest supporter, and they're all over this car. So. All right, well, there you go. Well, there you have it. That is your three-time world champion. I'm Terry Miller, the Disc Golf Guy. We're going to open this baby up, get it up to 35 or 40 or something like that. And uh, that's your McBeast in the car. I'm the disc golf guy. We'll catch you guys on the highway. We're back. What's in the car post USDGC? Give us a tour. It's been a long week, uh, stressful. We've had many people riding with us to and from the course. So I guess I'll let you in on the mess inside. First off, you got your trash of the Red Bull. You know, I gotta give a shout out to them. They've been supporting me since the World Championships this year. Um, not much up front. Got a little troll we found on the course earlier this year. My brother found it. It's actually my grandma was huge into those guys, so it's kind of kind of like a little sign we got to keep it. Back seat. We got some Huck Lab stools. Uh, they supported me for the throw pink this week, so thanks to them. Uh, grip bag. This is the bag I used all week. Uh, almost got me the victory. Some mistakes here and there, but what can I say? It's just another event. Uh, more. Oh, look. The camera for the McBeast Diaries. That's my competitor. In yes. Fact. <laughs> <laughs> yes. As you can see, it's not being used. He kind of didn't finish his job. Good thing the D DG guy is here to pick up. Yes. Filling in. Um, another chair. And then plenty of Red Bull. Actually, I think I left the rest of it in Oklahoma. Verizon, my phone supporter. And uh, plenty of hats back there. I would grab them, but there's too many. I was just thinking yesterday, you are very much a hat guy off the course and yeah. not on the course. Tell us why, because I'm a hat guy. Um, I don't, I think because baseball. When I wore a hat for baseball, it's always forward. And I don't know, disc golf, it just doesn't translate for me. Uh, but I do wear hats a lot, just not on the course. So the back's littered with them. And uh, 
I would share them, but there's too many to go That's through. That's all right. All right, everyone's just got to know, do you got any junk in your trunk? <laughs> Plenty. Plenty of junk in that trunk. Let's check it out. Oh, there you can see all the hats that are laced up up there. And, uh, lots of junk. Jackets. We got the suit. Apparently doesn't like to take that out of the trunk. That was the... The infamous suit that we saw debuted here at yes. the USDGC. Yeah, that's shoes, plenty of shoes. Need to be prepared for waterproof waterproof shoes just in case. Keens, they're supporting disc golf a lot. Uh, there's some backup disc down at the bottom. Umbrellas, we needed that all week uh, prior to the event and for the event. Oh, this is a cool gift that I got from Innova. They gave me it. Annabelle, embroidered chair. I didn't get to use it, but not yet. You never get to sit and relax, do you? Now no. it's the off season. Maybe you can. <laughs> Maybe. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see if that works out. Um, yeah, backup disc golf bag. Brought just in case. Two of every disc I threw here. Uh, I only had to pull out a few destroyers here and there and a Thunderbird, but kept most of my discs, which is good. My brother's bag, he's almost got more discs than I do. And then, oh, some socks. Had to go out and buy some socks. Always gotta be prepared. Had to buy some dress shoes too. I didn't get to wear these, but one day, one day I'll get to wear some nice shoes. Lots of water. Lots of water. Staying hydrated with yes. your water. Very <laughs> nice. Those are all just from this trip. We cleaned out the car before we left, so. Staying very hydrated out there. Could, should start a recycling center back here. I was just gonna say. Under armor in case it gets cold, and then. More backup discs, it looks like. Yes, this is stuff that I got for the event. The USDGC hats, more to put in the back window. Um, they put on a great show this week, so did the players, so it's fun to be a part of. And then again, more more discs, Champion AVR, Star AVRs, trying those out for next year. G-Star crates, I didn't get to throw those here, not really any shots for it. More AVRs, and then some Champion crates. Star T-Birds, and then the American Flag Dyed AVRs. Very nice. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, that is your official McBeast in the car. Paul, any parting shots? Just thanks for watching all year. It's been a great year. Um, I'm excited to start another one next year. Uh, 2015 should be bigger and better. All right. Best of luck to you. Thanks, buddy. Thank you.